Yo, it's Heavy Trev from Benedict Mud, and I don't want to waste any more time debating people about scary black rifles and things of that nature, because we've done it before. And I realized after Sandy Hook, after the Newtown shooting in 2012, I wrote an article for a defunct blog called Steel Patriot um, about gun control. And actually, the title of that article was called Let's talk about guns. A fireside chat. A fire. Fuck. Let's talk about guns. A fireside chat with the Steel Patriots resident, scary conservative gun owner. Because that's what we were all labeled back then. Really just scary, um, backward gun owners. And my point in doing this and reading some of these excerpts from from this this uh, this article is it's just the same old crap we've been arguing for years. And this comes at the, on the heels of the El Paso and the Dayton shootings. It's the same old stuff in the media. It's the same old demonization of specific weapon systems and, and not ignoring statistics and wanting to be just like freaking Australia. It's the same old stuff. So my point in this, I'm going to read you some excerpts. And this is basically my argument against everything else that's going, in, going on in the media um, relative to gun control in response to these horrific tragedies. So, I'm going to post this entire article from 2012 on BenedictMud.com so you can see exactly what I wrote. A lot of it is, you know, basically bashing uh, Senator, Senator Feinstein and um, our president at the time, Barack Obama, and the idea of executive orders and executive action relative to, um, to gun control. That basically ultimately failed back in 2012. No bail, no bills were actually passed in either house, in either chambers of Congress. Um, the president really didn't do much of anything. But anyway, I'm going to read you some excerpts and uh, freaking hair in my mouth. And they're applicable today, just like they were applicable back in 2012. Um, and again, this is this is just my rebuttal to those other arguments. So I made another video about what do we do moving forward with this epidemic in our country. Um, I'll do a little card thing or link in the description so you have that there. It outlines, outlines what I think should be done while we're waiting for our legislative branch and, and our mental health system to come to get up to speed with some of these things and our judicial system, the judicial system getting involved and exercising due process with these people. Anyway, first excerpt, quote. I'm quoting myself here. How can I make the argument that Feinstein, Barry... President Obama and company do not care about conducting a true threat assessment. Well, look at the violent crime figures in Australia where the government issued a full-out ban and buyback program. From 1995 to 2007, with a gun ban, Australia saw a 31.9% decrease in their murder rate. The U.S., where we still have the right to arm ourselves, had a 31.7% decrease. From 1995 to 2007, after Australia instituted its firearms ban, the country saw an increase in assaults by 49.2%, robbery by 6.2%, rape by 29.9%, and an overall violent crime rate increase of 42.2%. The U.S., on the other hand, saw a 31.8% decrease in violent crime, 19.2% decrease in rape, 33.2% decrease in robbery, and a 32.2% decrease and aggravated assaults in England where a similar tragedy to Sandy Hook that occurred in the 1990s spawn gun bans there was a 40% increase in handgun related crime from 1998 to 2005 gun crime in general has increased by 60% in England since 1998 as well so let us not forget there are more murders in the US every year with blunt objects than there are with guns there are more deaths in the U.S. every year from falls than gun murders as well. With all this information in front of us, gun control does not make a safer society and will not protect the innocent from evil. Hence why I am so disturbed by the government's reaction to Sandy Hook. For some sort of guidance on how to move on and prevent these types of tragedy, shouldn't we look at Newtown and see what their, Newtown, see what their response is? This community had just recently endured what we wish to prevent. Shouldn't their actions provide some insight into what we should do as a nation? Officials in Newtown have placed armed guards in all of their schools in the community. They have also proposed making their, their presence permanent. Is this the work of a gun nut like the Daily News described 
um, Wayne LaPierre. Wayne LaPierre suggested arming, putting armed guards in schools to eliminate soft targets back in 2012. I doubt we will hear the media accuse the Newtown officials of being such. So, already back then we were talking about, from our side of, of the situation, eliminating soft targets and the left and the mainstream media, they were labeling us as gun nuts, quote unquote. Anyway, Ed Schultz, another PMS, PMS, NBC TV and radio propaganda stated uh, back in 2012, we've never had a civilian stop a shooting. Um, and I went on this in this article to to rebut that um, because we I brought up the Pearl High School shooting where a principal ran to his truck and retrieved his 45 um, handgun and held the gunman at point until the authorities arrived, thus um, thwarting a mass shooting in a school. What else did I do? Oh, okay. So this, this is the key part of what I wanted to read to you, and this is a little, little longer, but the whole demonization of a specific weapons platform or a couple weapons platform that looks scary, like AK-47 and AR-15 type style platform um, weapon systems. So this is my rebuttal to, to targeting quote unquote assault weapons and specific weapons platforms. To the article, what is an assault weapon? The term is simply pejorative. The weapon system at the heart of the, this debate is the AR-15. No, AR does not stand for assault rifle. It is the name of the original manufacturer of the weapon, Armalite, founded in the 1950s. The AR-15 AK and other platforms targeted by the ex executive orders, meaning Obama's potential executive orders, are not military-grade weapons. They are civilian versions. The M4 and M16 are the military versions of the AR-15, rifle respectively the m4 and m16 rifles have the ability to fire on full auto and three round bursts where the ar-15 is a semi-automatic weapon this means that the weapon will fire every time you pull the trigger back then the media was having a hard time understanding the concept of of rate of fire and uh i think we the, the term fully semi-automatic uh came out in, in the media very misleading right uh, this technology or firing mechanism is not a new advent to the civilian market for firearms. Semi-automatic weapons have been available and widely present in the civilian firearms world. For example, the Colt 1903 and 1911 are semi-automatic handguns. And yes, 1903 and 1911 reference their model years. The M1 Garand, a semi-automatic rifle chambered in 30-06, was developed through the 20s and went to the service in the 1930s. Civilians have had access to the semi-automatic rifle for over 70 years. I have no doubt in my mind that we will have a uh, assault weapons ban tomorrow. I was wrong. So let's follow the natural progression of this madness and what weapons would still be available. Okay, so as of tomorrow, all AR platform rifles and AK rifles are outlawed. That's fine. I'll go pick me up an M1 Garand. Yes, this rifle looks less scary than an AR because it has a wooden stock that is not com com comprised of an upper or and lower receiver, but packs a 30 6 round that is common to high power rifles for hunting. This round dwarfs the 5.56 NATO round from the AR and the 7.62 round found in most AKs. Maybe an M1 is not your cup of tea. Uh, you could get get yourself an M1A, which is a semi-automatic version of the M14, first developed for the military in the 1950s. This rifle features a larger round than the 5.56 AR, which is is the 7.62. Basically, it is a deer rifle, 308. Uh, at this point, Chairman Barry, I meant President Obama, would have to issue another gun ban edict to prohibit us from ha from attaining wooden stock semi-automatic uh, rifles and deer hunting caliber rifles we will all be safe from gun violence at this point i was being sarcastic obviously side note the ar-15 platform is one of the most popular platforms for hunting in the country it is used primarily for predator and nuisance animal hunting with that said since the second Am amendment protects hunting apparently i guess i get to keep my ar because again, remember the I believe it was Joe Biden at the time said that and and Barack, um, President Obama, sorry, said that the Second Amendment is basically relative to hunting and that's it, not protecting us from the tyranny of of uh, of, of government. Fine, I can't have my rifles. Ban them all. I still got my shotguns. 
Oh wait, Barry will confiscate my semi-automatic Benelli 12 gauge that I use for duck hunting because it is a semi-automatic and deemed contraband. I guess I'll have to settle with my old pump action 12 gauge then. Well, General McChrystal stated that he has seen the devastating power of 556 cartridge from the M4 and what it has done to flesh. What about a 12 gauge shotgun slug? Perhaps buckshot? The point is, if you ban and or confiscate certain types of weapons you deem not necessary for hunting, the everyday pump shotgun carried by deer hunters and waterfowl hunters can inflict as much carnage and death as the shooter can manage without opposition. In terms of magazine capacity limits, the criminal element will always be able to attain magazines and capacities higher than stated law. This is not the federal government's role to regulate. If a state chooses to do this, so be it. Governor, Governor Cuomo of New York is on a mission to make sure you can only have seven rounds in your magazine as he taxes you 70 cents on each dollar you make. <laughs> that was clever. I have ordered it. That's stupid. Anyway, what good What good does this truly do? Fine, I can't have my Glock with one in the chamber and nine in the mag. Instead, you could get speed loaders for revolvers. Remember those? Um, you could even resort back to 19th century technology like the Henry Repeating Rifle which was chambered in 44 and had a 16 round two magazine. Hell, get a 22 revolver which can pack 10 rounds in the cylinder. Here's another thought. What if the government regulates us all to using small cal the smallest caliber possibly on the market like the 22? We could acquire rifles with 25 round capacities in 22. I hope that helps you sleep at night because the 22 is the mo is the round most commonly used by assassins allegedly. This is because it usually usually does not exit the target and the bullet is typically bullet is typically destroyed beyond recognition that ballistic investigators cannot trace it to a specific weapon. My point is simple. Targeting specific weapons and magazines will not prevent evil from from trying to take as many lives as possible or prevent the nearly 22 murders in 11 days in Chairman Obama's hometown of Chicago. Not much has changed in Chicago. Uh, I think it was a pretty bloody, bloody um, um, weekend in Chicago. I think the, they're on record for the highest murder rate. Uh, of their history this year, something to that effect. Anyway, so that's my rebuttal to the gun grabbers' arguments circa 2019, based upon arguments I made back in 2012 from an old article I wrote. So, again, full article will be on the website, link in the description, all the happy crap. Um, and yeah, read it, read this thing in its entirety. It's just funny how it's not funny, it's actually sad that nothing has changed really. In seven years, what have we really done proactively and pragmatically to to eliminate soft targets and, and to take out these assholes who perpetrate these mass murders or attempt to perpetrate mass murder and killing? Nothing. It's really sad. And, and I feel like I keep making the same arguments over and over again. So I'm not going to debate the gun grabbers anymore. I mean, it is what it is. I made, the, I made this argument seven years ago. It's in, it's in writing. It was published online. It's there. I've done it. Now it's actually time to take action and actually do something. Um, and again, I have another video for that. All right, kids. Heavy trip out.